It's like the world is giving me a daily reminder and saying, hey, just because you call yourself a minimalist and you wear the same hoodie and croc shoes every day doesn't mean you're not a privileged piece of shit. So, you know, it really humbles me. weekend I did a giveaway for Sorcery of Thorns. Now I'm doing another giveaway for five more books. I feel like I'm the Oprah of booktube now. I'm just like, you get a book, you get a book. Oh, you're worried about booktube consumerism? Not my problem. Here, take this book. Who's minimalism? We don't know her. I've done a video with Book of the Month YA before. It's essentially a subscription box that you can get every month and it helps people discover the best new young adult fiction books. They offer five new releases each month and every member gets to pick one book to ship home. Obviously, if you don't like any book during a particular month or you feel like you're collecting too many, you can always skip a month whenever you want without having to pay anything extra. Even though I personally don't buy books, I like following book of the month because I would keep track of all the new releases that they would pick. And what I would do is if I saw a book that I liked, I would make my library buy it instead because I'm a cheap bitch. The downside is that when I order a book from the library, I have to wait several months before it even possibly maybe buys the book. And I have to go through a wait list behind other people who also want to read the book. Personally, I'm fine with waiting several months before reading a new release, but I know a lot of people really want that instant gratification where they get their own personal copy of the book in hardback, in new condition, without the grubby hands of the general public, and on a day that is released so that you're still in the current conversation. And so that's where Book of the Month YA is a useful subscription service. The new code that they're promoting is PSL5. So if you use that code, you can get your first box for $9.99, which is actually a cheaper price than if you had bought the hardcover copy at any regular bookstore. Or if you want to be a silent observer like me and you're only interested in just seeing what books they pick, they also have a newsletter. It's a free email newsletter and you basically get updated with the best upcoming YA books and you can check it out at this link here. So last time I did a video with them, I did a lookbook and it was really cute and quirky and people liked it. But also at the same time, I was like, this shit is too much work. Let's dial it down this time and go with something a bit easier. Last time that I partnered with them, I took a lot of nice bookstagram photos for the five books that they sent me that month. I'm gonna do another giveaway for the five books that they sent me in October, but I did want to show you kind of the process, well, if I say process, that sounds like it's this big thing. It's really not, but the point is, I took some nice Bookstagram photos. Bookstagram is pretty much known for having these really elaborate, aesthetically beautiful photos of these majestic bookshelves, or fall themed flat lays or these really complex photoshopped images. There's a lot of work that gets put into making a book aesthetically pleasing for an Instagram photo. But for me, I don't do that. I just hold up a book in front of my camera and I take a picture and then I boost up the saturation and then I'm done. So I'm gonna show you the books that they sent me for the month of October. And for each book, I'll also show you the location of where I shot these bookstagram photos. So the first area that I'm going to show you is basically my neighborhood, which is the Neon Arts District. And the books that I'm going to pair with these are Wayward Son by Rainbow Rowell and Full Disclosure by Cameron Garrett. As you can see, these books have very bright colors Colors, which is why I chose them specifically for the Neon Arts District because the cool thing about the neighborhood is that it is pretty much decorated with murals everywhere you go. There are so many people that will go ahead and take their engagement photos or Instagram selfies or whatever in front of these murals and then you have me just <laughs> taking pictures of a book. I mustered up the courage to go outside in the public eye so that I can take pictures of books and look like a nerd. But it's worth it for the Instagram. Not only are the walls painted with murals, but even the benches that you walk past by are painted with different murals as well. When I looked at the cover for full disclosure, I immediately thought of this bench. It's basically a bench that is all blue and it has jellyfish painted on it. I find 
walked over to the area and I went over to that specific bench and then I basically just placed the book in various ways. Something that I didn't realize until I actually visited the bench was that it has a few warm colors that actually might match the purple that you see in this book cover as well. When I looked back and edited the photos, I ended up choosing the specific photo where it's not just all blue, but you see a little bit of a reddish purple-ish warm color as well. So that was kind of like an easy no-brainer for me. I think it matches the ethereal vibe that you get from the cover along with the art style of the bench. And then while I was in the same area, I realized that a lot of things around me also matched Wayward Sun. One thing that matched was the ground. We have these concrete blocks where there are just stripes of color just to add a little something to the sidewalk. I just happened to have found a strip of color that matched the yellows and blues of Wayward Sun. So I went ahead and just <laughs> tried placing the book on the sidewalk and then literally just a few feet away was a fence that was painted in rainbow colors, some of them including the yellow and blue that is featured in Wayward Sun. That was an instance where I held up the book and tried to take as many photos that did not look crooked. So those were my initial attempts for Wayward Sun, but the photo that I ultimately ended up using was from an area Area that was a few blocks away from the benches. There's a company called Virginia Furniture Company and behind their building is this huge wall-sized mural of basically blocks of color with clouds. I went ahead and ducked behind the building to try to grab pictures that included both the yellow and the blues. And when I started editing it, for some reason, I prefer this book cover with the blocks of yellow and blue from the building. And I think the reason why is because the yellows and the blues were slightly different and I feel like that makes the cover look bolder in comparison. I don't know, I think that's just kind of the rationale that was in my mind. By the time I post the photo, I think I'm gonna end up choosing that one instead of the other two. But I do think I was really lucky to find three areas where they all match this cover. You don't really see this bright yellow and blue combination that often, but I guess the perks of living in an arts district is that you get these bright colors to take advantage of for your bookstagram. The next book that they picked for October is a fantasy book called Fireborn. Obviously, looking at this cover, we're gonna need to find a red background. For this, I decided to choose my location as my workplace. The nice thing about our office is that it has a very casual, relaxed environment that doesn't feel corporate or stuffy at all. Right when you enter the office, it is super bright with lots of great natural lighting. And when you cross down the hallway, you see brick exposed walls and you see a series of chalkboard canvases. My office invites local artists to come in and draw these amazing chalkboard drawings that show off the type of work that they do and also give me an excuse to take a bookstagram photo by utilizing other people's artistic talents instead of my own. On the Fireborn cover, there are these diagonal lines that are coming out of the dragon. I decided to try to match it with this particular chalkboard drawing that had these geometric lines. But when I took these photos, I didn't really like how they turned out. An alternative idea that I had turned out to be better. We have brick walls throughout the building to kind of add character and history to it. When you cross down the hallway, there is actually this specific nook. There's just like this random hole in it that was not filled up. It's a really cool place to just put a book and then take a picture there. And I ended up really liking how it turned out because I think with the subject matter of the dragon paired along with the weird ashy black stuff that's dripping from the wall. And then it kind of looks like the smoke that's coming out of a dragon. I don't know, maybe this is a stretch, but regardless, I thought that this turned out better. The last two books that Book of the Month chose for October is The Fountains of Silence by Ruta Sepedis and The Beautiful by Renee Adier. These, at first, when I saw them, were gonna be tricky, but then I realized that now I live in a bougie ass apartment. You might not realize this because my apartment it looks very empty, clearly belonging to the life of a sad bachelorette, 
but the rest of the apartment looks really fancy. When I moved to my new apartment, I wanted to live somewhere that would be walkable to work. And my workplace happens to be in downtown and downtown apartments happen to be bougie as fuck. I have always felt out of place in this apartment because I'm just wearing crop tops and short shorts while I'm surrounded by chandeliers and overly expensive paintings. But now I can somehow try to make them fit. You'll see what I mean when I show you what I did for the beautiful. The beautiful obviously has a very elegant cover. Unfortunately, I do not have an extravagant rose wall, but what I do have is an extravagant apartment lobby. Right when you walk in, you are just slapped in the face by these grand majestic staircases and chandeliers. It's like the world is giving me a daily reminder and saying, hey, just because you call yourself a minimalist and you wear the same hoodie and croc shoes every day doesn't mean you're not a privileged piece of shit. So, you know, it really humbles me. I've decided to embrace my privilege and just at least use it to my advantage for Instagram. And with the beautiful, even though I don't have an extravagant rose wall, I at least have the overly elaborate staircase. I took a couple of photos of the book propped next to the staircase because they have these intricate ornate designs to them that I thought would match the elegant aesthetic of the cover. I also tried to take a few photos of the book just in front of the area in general so that it really feels bougie. But what I ended up using was the black designs that would match the elegance of the beautiful cover. And if you're wondering if I was walking around to try to take a picture of a book and then running away every time someone new entered the building, you would be right. But again, we gotta do it for the bookstagram. And then for the Fountains of Silence, I decided to try to take as many options of this book within the club room. The club room is an area that is communal for everyone who is living in the apartment. And it's also the area where I steal their Wi-Fi. It has all these decorations that generally have a similar hue to the Fountains of Silence. I try to take a few photos holding up the book in front of the paintings, as well as placing the book on top of the mahogany desk and the golden decorations and all of this other bougie ass shit. But for some reason, the photo that I ended up liking best was actually the one where I placed the book on top of a bench. I think that the pattern that it had is a little bit vintage and therefore it's more suiting for this historical book. I went back and edited all the different versions of what this book could look like in front of different backdrops, but I ended up choosing the one that was on top of the bench just because because I really like the texture. It's kind of interesting to see the photo as itself and then compare it to the entire context of where I even took this photo. Hopefully by showing you the photos and kind of the behind the scenes of where I took these books, you'll have an understanding that whatever's contained in the square image of Instagram is just a little bit of a speck compared to the grander world around you. My circumstances are obviously unique because I live in a really nice area and I ended up in this bougie ass apartment, but I do think that it's worth noting that sometimes it's just a matter of finding a texture that reminds you of the book somehow, or finding colors that remind you of the book or complement the book. This is why I did not title this video a guide to bookstagram because it's not. Maybe a privileged guide to bookstagram, that would be more fitting. But once you see these pictures start to pop up in my Instagram, now you know the context of how I took them and where I took them. If any of these books interest you, once again, and you can use the code PSL5 to get your first month for $9.99. Now I'm gonna go to the club room and steal their Wi-Fi once again to edit this video. Don't forget to unsubscribe, bye. Hi, apparently I'm a dumbass and I forgot to mention the details of the giveaway. Basically what I'm gonna do is there will be a link to a form in my description box. If you fill out the form, I will choose a random winner by let's say October 6th. Since I'm already here, I might as well do a couple of shout outs for a small smaller booktubers. It's been a while since I did this, but basically every time I hit a new milestone on my channel, which is getting a thousand subscribers, I will shout out another booktuber who has less than a thousand subscribers. Last time I did this, I had 35K and now I have 48K. 
If I did the math correctly, I owe 13 shout outs. So bear with me as I try to properly give my appreciation to 13 people in this video without making it like a full length feature film. The first booktuber that I will shout out is Elle Attempts to Read. She is super sweet. She's very quirky and cute. If you like how I only read library books, she also does library haul videos. My most recent favorite video of hers is the one where she has very specific recommendations based on very specific things. One of them being We Are Okay by Nina LaCour, which is a contemporary book that I also really enjoy. Second booktuber is In Between Pages. She has a really great video about the rating system for books and why it doesn't work. Beyond that, she also has staple videos like book hauls and monthly wrap-ups, but something that I've noticed about her channel is that she does a lot more book reviews than what you would normally see from other channels, and I appreciate that because book reviews seem to be lacking on booktube for some reason even though they should be the main thing third person i want to shout out is super pal she is actually one of the first booktubers i watched when i started this channel i'm planning on doing a video where i talk about my thoughts on the raven boys but i've only read the first book and if you really want to hear someone's thoughts on the whole raven cycle from the perspective of someone who's read it for the first time she's actually doing a whole series where she vlogs her experience and she reviews the books individually fourth booktuber i want to shout out is ansi andy if you like internet national reading vlogs then you might like his stuff he did a travel reading vlog where he read never night in london but i think my favorite video of his is the one where he did a rant review of the gilded wolves the fifth person i'm gonna shout out is Chantel reese my favorite video of hers is her paint and book chat she painted this gorgeous drawing while she talked about popular books that she won't be reading i just found it super relaxing to watch it kind of felt like i was painting alongside with her and just chatting about books so I really like the calm, mellow energy that she has. The sixth person I'm gonna shout out is Toilet Regina. If you like memes, you'll like her. She did a series of vlogs for the Grisha Longathon where she read the Grisha trilogy for the first time and then she did another series of vlogs where she read the Six of Crows duology for the first time. Lots of thoughts, lots of feelings. Overall, she just has a very chaotic energy that I like. The seventh person I wanna shout out is Rose Rambles. If you like some of the travel videos that I've made, I think that you would like her channel as well. She's actually new to booktube and she is transitioning from travel videos to bookish videos. There's a lot of variety to her channel so you get that combination of both bookish content, travel content, and then general geeky stuff like Marvel. I think she has like a lot to offer that is beyond the scope of bookish stuff. Eighth person I want to shout out is Medusa Reads. If you like readathons, I think that you would like her channel. She's participated in the Methathon, the Tim Burton readathon, Hocus Pocus readathon, and just several others that have escaped my brain. But she's done a lot. She also does a lot of vlogs and I think it's kind of nice to get a glimpse of what it's like to balance out both reading and being a young mom and how she tackles all of that. The next two I'm gonna shout out will be international booktubers because I realized that I haven't really shouted out any international people even though there are definitely people who watch my videos that aren't English speakers. If you want to broaden out a little bit, the ninth person that I will shout out is Jim Reads and Dreams. He is a Greek booktuber and he does a lot of really cool videos like the Greek mythology book tag and he also has this one video where he shows his entire Harry Potter collection that I think is really cool. The other international booktuber I want to shout out is Suspiros da Bea. She is a Portuguese booktuber and she does a lot of book hauls and wrap-ups and it's cool to see what another person on the other side of the world orders for her books. She also does reading vlogs for books that you've probably read before. I think the most recent vlog that I've seen of hers is one where she covers Dry by Neil Schusterman. And then the last three booktubers that I'm going to to shout out is actually booktubers that have over 1,000 subscribers. I kind of want to expand this a little bit to people who have a little bit over a thousand but are still kind of small and growing and still deserve more attention. I want to try to do it under 5k subs. The 11th booktuber that I will shout out is With Cinnamon Please. She is a Portuguese booktuber but she speaks English for all of her videos. So even if you are linguistically incompetent like me, you can still watch them. She recently participated in the Newts and she documented her experiences through vlogs and she just has a very calm energy to her. The 12th booktuber that I want to shout out is Yogi 
with the book. She is also known as the host of Latinxathon. I love that she puts so much thought and care into the readathon and reading more diverse books. She has great Latinx recommendations and you can always turn to her if you want to read more diverse books. I met her when I was in New York last year. I just loved hearing her rant very candidly about specific books and authors that she did not like, including authors that she has blocked because they were annoying, but I'm gonna keep that to myself because tea. Last but not least, I want to shout out It's Chanel. I also got to hang out with her last summer and she will appear in a future video. What I've noticed from hanging out with her is that she acts pretty much exactly the same in real life as she does in her videos, which is someone who is just super chill and fun to hang out with and just loves reading books. I don't know if it's because she puts in the extra effort to make her videos more aesthetically pleasing, but I just find her videos very comforting to watch. I really enjoy getting to hang out with her. I think she's a great person and you will definitely see her in a future video, but I wanted to get her on your radar before I post that video. There we have it, 13 small booktubers that I am shouting out. If you have actually watched all the way to the end of this video and you are interested in participating in the giveaway, there will be a second question in the form that asks you how are you feeling today. To show that you watched the video all the way to the very end, you should answer, I'm feeling beautiful. And then that way I'll know that you actually watched the video and maybe that will increase your chances of winning the five books. Okay, that's all I have. Happy October. I hope this will be a good month because we fucking need it. <laughs> uh, yeah, have a good month. Bye.